things I like to do when I come out west is work in the still waters. You know, I love moving bodies of water. I spend most of my time fishing trout and moving bodies of water in Pennsylvania. But when I have an opportunity to go on some just beautiful wild trout lakes, I'm gonna do that. And one of the things that we did was looking for gulpers. Basically early morning opportunities where fish are cruising higher in the water column, looking for, it could be either trico spinners, it could be calabetas, but you have fish that are in deeper water cruising at a shallower point and you're head hunting basically. You're not just kind of pushing it out there, making multiple casts, blind casts, and you're actually just searching the water and just targeting specific fish. And so for me, it's one of the most visual and probably one of the most exciting aspects of fly fishing because you're really hunting rather than just kind of targeting the water. So we got bugs, we have bugs in the water. We just hopefully have enough fish coming up to, to the surface. So we're just kind of casually kind of meander, just kind of go right along the shoreline, just look for some heads and then just kind of, it's like salt water, just when we start seeing a pot of good sized fish, if we do, Start moving towards them and see what happens. How far off the bank do you want to be? Uh, maybe, maybe no more than maybe 30, 40 yards to most. And we're just going to just kind of slowly just start working our way up and okay. just kind of see what happens. It's great. Yeah, we're just going to just, this is kind of just uh, more of the waiting game than anything else. Okay. Just kind of just searching the water, just looking for anything and anything that's decent. Do you do much still water? Uh, here's a good one, a decent fish right here. I like it. It can be glorious, or you can go home a complete failure. So, <laughs> I teach a total of it's uh, three different fly fishing classes, but seven sections. So it's uh, so yeah, basically seven classes throughout the semester. And there's other outreach things that we do for local community and organizations, and especially now with the minority programs, where um, providing educational opportunities for some minority programs local, uh, locally to just try to recruit and just get more, more people outside and just get them to understand what incredible resources are readily available and how you can do it actually on the cheap. So it's, it's, a, it's a cool gig. When I was 14 years old, I started reading a guy named Joe Humphreys and George Harvey, but I started reading their books when I was 14 and read about, because they were, they were the instructors that started the program. It's like, man, that would be a pretty kick-ass gig. You could actually work at a university full-time teaching college classes on fly fishing and have off in the summer. So it, uh, I kind of put all my eggs in the one basket, but finally after two years or two years ago, it kind of it kind of fell into my lap. So seeing some more bugs and I'm seeing a few rises up there. Uh, so we're not seeing anything here. So we need to, we need to move. I mean, we've got plenty of bugs on the, on the shoreline right here. I mean, lots of trichos, but snow taker so let's just go up a little bit higher there's a little bit more current a little bit more structure but normally this is a great flat I mean you can usually just pull in here and see you know a couple dozen fish rising so we just need to move that's what my gut tells me and there was a good fish right there yeah okay so that's what that's that's what it looks like that's what it's gonna these little dinks that's we're not after those we're after something that's like that but yeah. that's the let's just give it a second here let's take a look it might just be a one and done, but normally like you're gonna see these fish will, like within like 20 seconds, they're gonna do that like three or four times. Like they're just suspended on the surface, just boom, 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 just plucking down insects. But I'm not seeing enough insects out there. So like right now, I just see like it's more of a one and done. So that's why like, let's just grab Kevin. Let's go up and see if we can get up to an area where there's more bugs in the surface and actually fish staying on the top. So yeah, sweet. let's roll. Kind of like saltwater fishing right here. You're on this flat water, you're on the skiff, and you're just playing for hours, and basically 90% of your action happens in like 5% of your day. Did you hear that, Pete? Did you hear that? Oh. I didn't know. Okay, alright. That's what we're that's what we're hoping for. A lot more of. Oh, this is just, you know, this is kind of what you get. You just don't know it can be epic. But we'll just we'll give this, we'll keep going for a little bit longer until the wind picks up, and then we'll definitely. We'll do well on the mass, and there's no doubt about that. I'm pretty confident about that, but awesome. I'm, I'm still hoping we, we can get some good, just get some good gulper shots and some dry fly action. We just need some targets. Jurassic Park here, doesn't it? It's just so freaking yeah. cool. P, are you married? No. Okay, well this this will bring the guns out. This will this will keep you in shape. This will make you, what do you call it, market worthy or marketable? <laughs> 
almost like a gap there and you almost have the, the pods of trichos on either side of the gap but it just you can see there's just a little gap and that's where the, the channel yeah. of the Madison's coming up through okay. within like a, within the first couple six seven seconds of the cast being made and the flies entering usually they'll jump on it if not kind of like you watch the dry fly land you'll see the the waves kind of disperse let it drift for a few seconds and if nothing happens especially when you kind of drift them like this just quietly pick up and just recast there's a good fish down there So we're gonna be doing some small stuff. Right now, this time of the year, I don't think it really matters. We're just gonna be fishing some micro, like little pertagons, little PTs. So they're tied on a Euro jig with a little tungsten bead, but to get the fly down to where we need to, we're gonna be doing a drop shot. And my experience with this system is if you're not, if your flies, or in this case, your split shot's not ticking bottom, you're not feeling the tick, you're often not fishing deep enough and slow enough, so. This is really a, a system this time of the year where I think you just you just need a slow grind. So there's only so much weight you can fish into a fly. And I, I tend to like fishing smaller flies. And because of that, we need some additional weight in the form of split shot. And that's what we're gonna do. Just kind of a modified drop shot approach. Right now, this last run where we stuck a couple of those whiteies, we had four size B split shot. So we were, we were packing a good payload. It's just this river is so deceiving and so swift with these massive currents you just you get so much surface drag you just need something enough weight to help kind of pull and keep things nice and tight and give you connection and then also more importantly hold the flies slow enough in these pockets and what's so cool about hydrology is like when you look at this water if you're a newbie to fly fishing you're thinking well there's no way fish can hold in this but in fact when you have a system like this where you've got these really large boulders and substrates those boulders and substrates are gonna create an equal soft pocket, basically a cushion where fish can hold and suspend themselves either above and sometimes directly below. So as long as you got faster currents, but as long as you got large boulders, large substrates, there's gonna be pockets and there's gonna be fish holding behind those pockets. And that's what we're, we're pretty much doing right here. Just kind of looking at the white water and looking for any like major little bump indicating that there's a large boulder. And those are the areas that we're gonna be kind of targeting with this drop shot approach. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on, come on. So same thing here, we can just kind of just slide over. You can see that, can you see the transition from the yellow to the brown? So we kind of just need to be kind of right on, kind of on the edge of that yellow if possible. We are right in there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, better fish. Woo! Yeah, a little brownie. <laughs> All right. Let's just anchor up, call a bobber there. Really work this pocket in the front side of this big boulder here. Just high stick it, keep as much line off the water as you can. A little closer in. Perfect, that was great. Front side of that rock. Yep. Where are you looking at, Pete? <laughs> oh, please. Please, please, please. I'm gonna I'm gonna anchor up right here. This is buzz. This is a great. Got one? Bottom? Good connection. In the last couple of days, 
This is what fishing's about. The first day we hit a lake section of the water where I've had a lot of success in the past and we just got our ass kicked. Uh, we had a few bugs but virtually no fish on the surface so we kind of sucked it up, licked our wounds and then we came out to uh, Lake B on the next day similar time frame but we had bugs and more importantly we had fish on the surface and one of the things I like to do is obviously you can throw dry flies but when you have fish that are looking at dry flies fish feeding on the surface tend to be definitely a little bit more discriminative when they're eating so you can throw dry flies it's definitely fun and very visual but if you want a little more success one of the things I like to do is just take a higher floating dry fly and just drop like even like a little zebra midge on 6x tippet 5x tippet maybe 10 12 inches below that but you're just fishing the flies very shallow and having that fly just even 12 inches below the surface fish tend to commit more to that lower riding fly than actually looking at the one at the surface so so for us we had decent success we found some fish cruising targeted a couple of fish made a couple of decent cast and actually landed a few fish got a good distance here yeah we got fish rising down here but just kind of maintain the same distance off the weed off the tree line we'll just kind of keep going down but yep just slow and steady but we've got we've got some players coming up down here so easy to get excited just want to start casting everything but just sometimes just kind of setting yourself up and just making a good cast right off the get-go we need to do is not bring a net on any of our trips it's going to guarantee a lot better success yeah <laughs> here's one right here drop it right in there it's on it it's on it it's on it nope there's another one don't do anything with yours quiet here it's just you could definitely be throwing some calabatus and having some success but usually a dry drop with like a little zebra midge it's i'm not saying it's a guarantee but it's just it's a much higher percentage it's just Anytime fish are feeding below the surface, even if it's 12 inches, they're just so much more comfortable feeding and more ready to commit. So here, I mean, we could be throwing some stuff on the surface, which we might later on, but if you want your higher percentage shots, just find a rising fish and just do a shallow dry dropper. You're going to be far better off. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. All right. So with this right now, we're just going to do some dry dropper fishing. Uh, th on this lake, in my experience, it's just been, you have some risers. We might want to hit them with some calabatus, uh, but just dropping like a little zebra midge under uh, an elk hair caddis. Elk hair caddis is really nothing more than just a kind of a low vis indicator or a more subtle indicator. But since these fish are cruising right below the surface, we're just gonna just drop this fly, this nymph, maybe 12, 13, 14 inches underneath the, the dry fly and just hope for the best. This is just, uh, it's an awesome opportunity to come out here, uh, work the boats. And one of the things I do like about watercraft is watercraft that gives you the flexibility to kind of work both lakes and moving bodies of water like rivers and streams. There's no such thing as a perfect boat, but there are watercrafts out there that allow you to basically kill two and three birds with one stone. And for me, it's definitely that fly craft, especially the 2.0, where I feel like I can go on moving bodies of water, have the stability and ability to kind of move and maneuver and get into fish, but also have the opportunity to go out and cruise for some you know, large fish looking at, at the surface. So that's what I love about these watercraft.